Hello, Loveland Magazine viewers. Cassie Mattia here, and I am with a very special individual, Linda Bergholtz. How are you today? I am very well, thank very you. Very well. It's so good to have you here with us. Today. Yes, and good to have you too. Now, if you guys don't know who she is, there's an issue, right? She's all around town doing the <laughs> best work, the best charity work, the best for students, the best for those less fortunate. She's a part of Life Food Pantry. She's a part of LMA, right? Loveland Music Academy, which is why we're here today. Um, they just recently made a move into this brand new facility. We are in Linda's office right yes, now, which is gorgeous, right in front of the grand piano, right? Right here so beautiful now while we're here we want to kind of talk about the move we want to talk about your background mm -hmm. and we really want to tell everybody what Loveland Music Academy is about because it's super important um, really the only place around here that offers this type of extensive yes. music lessons music I would say music education yes absolutely. so let's start off tell me what is Loveland Music Academy when did it start? Tell me all about it and your background as well. Just give me the rundown. Okay. Um, we established Loveland Music Academy in 2007. I have a business partner, Aaron O'Keefe, and he and I were teaching from our homes and decided that we really needed an establishment within the Loveland community for more than just the things we were teaching. We wanted to have other teachers available to teach band instruments, to teach strings, to teach things that we didn't teach. Right. Um, and also we both had waiting lists because we couldn't accommodate all the students that were calling wanting lessons. Right. So we began searching. We started across the street from where we just moved from. Which was? to be um, above the blue chip cookie. Company, okay. which was on the corner, um, and it was the Schickel Art Gallery upstairs. Okay. And so Joe Schickel rented space to us next to the gallery upstairs, and so we started with four studios in 2007. Within a couple of months, we were up to six studios. Then we squeezed in two more studios to make it eight, and then we ran out of space. So at the end of two years, we were overflowing. We couldn't take more students. We couldn't add on more teachers. There's simply not room, and it was through right. no fault of the Schickel Galleries. Right. There was simply no more room. So at that point, we moved across the street to 209, which was in one of the brown buildings. Um, we had the whole upper floor of the building that now houses um, Montgomery Cyclery okay. and um, the Bloom store Blue, yes yes right and a, a number of different trust like right. provisions is in the back and right so at the time we moved over there none of those were there there were empty spaces on the front in the front um there was a little i don't know kind of a horse tack shop okay there, and the bureau of license Oh, that used to be there? Okay. Used to be there. And now it's there down by you guys. And now it's down life. by the life food yep. pantry. Yep. Um, and so when we moved in there, there was one person upstairs um, doing some private personal training, and there was really nothing else in the building other than Rossi's, which was in the back. Right. And so we gradually started with eight studios there, increased to ten, and then took over the rest of the upstairs and built up to twenty. Wow. studios at that point. So we were in that building from 2009 up until September of this year. Of recent. Of recent. Now, yes. in saying that, you know, people, I don't think necessarily grasp how important Loveland, Loveland Music Academy is, right? You service 400 to 500 students a week. Yes. You have 24 plus instructors. Yes. Mm tons of parents, right? Yes. That honestly service the downtown area, right? Oh, they shop, absolutely. they eat at the businesses, they're given into that economy. Absolutely. So Loveland Music Academy, right? You you offer private lessons, okay? So yes. tell me why you decided to input this into Loveland. Now I, I read a little bit of the background. There is nothing available here for no. students, right? You even do adults. Right. So tell me what lessons you offer. Tell me about the pricing and just Tell me sure. why. What, why did you bring sure. this into Loveland? Well, Aaron and I were both Loveland residents. My uh -huh. children both went to Loveland schools, um, and the Loveland schools had superb music programs. But there weren't a lot of private instructors, and the ones that there were were in individual neighborhoods, you know, teaching out of their home. But there wasn't an established music school, right, per se. Um, I think Aaron and I had very patient neighbors because they heard guitars and they heard drums and they heard pianos with the windows open and were probably glad when we said, you know, we probably should move into a space that other students can come into. Right. And so when we decided to do that, we knew that we wanted to support the band program at school. So we wanted teachers that would teach 
strings and woodwinds and brass and percussion. And then there were other kids that just wanted to play the piano or just play the guitar or Sean Miller and his show choir, lots of yes. kids like to sing. And so we wanted to support that by having voice instructors right. Right. to help support those programs right. because those kids need private instruction. Right. And so we wanted kind of an all-purpose school, but we wanted to keep it a reasonable price. We started out 20 to $25 a lesson depending on, those are half an hour lessons, of course, depending on the instructor because right. of course if they have a doctorate in music, the lessons are going to cost a Amen. little bit more. Yep. But we, we've increased immensely. We're up now to between 22 and $30 an hour. There you go. Or half an hour. Yes. Excuse me. So our prices have stayed very reliable. We are not Hyde Park. We are not downtown Cincinnati. This is Loveland. Right. We want the kids in this community to have that private music experience at a cost that their parents can afford. Right. And private lessons are a choice. They're not a guarantee for many families. Right. And so we want to keep it a reasonable price and they get a good value for their dollars and so we literally teach virtually every musical instrument. Yeah that's what I was looking at you you teach what piano percussion brass guitar woodwinds strings and voice and recording all that mm -hmm. that's unbelievable and yeah. you have instructors that specialize in that. In all of those things we do banjo we do mandolin which wow. is a little unusual we do dulcimer so we don't and recorder yeah. so some of those are kind of esoteric instruments that you don't hear too much. Right. Right. Of. And so we have that. We also have a couple of teachers that specialize in special needs children. Oh, we have beautiful. students that are artistic. We have students that are kids from Ohio Valley Voices right. who have cochlear implants. And oh so gosh. we work with those kind of kids. We've had a number of Down syndrome children. And so we have teachers that will accommodate the need of not only the children, but we teach adults. Lots of people say, oh, I took piano lessons when I was a kid and I really didn't stick to it and I'd like to do it again. Right, right. That's one of my specialties. I love to teach teenagers and adults. And so we range from three years old all the way up through, I think my oldest student was 76 when she oh started. Oh my gosh! Right. And so it's, it's just amazing because at any given time it's a cacophony of different sounds coming right. out of the rooms which right. just make me very happy. Right. Now in saying that, Linda, to me, the youth are important, right? They're, they're, that's what's going to make the world go round. That's oh, what absolutely. I'm concerned with. You know, I have um, younger brothers and sisters on the right. oldest. Loveland Music Academy, and I know you've had tons of stories, tons of different students. What does this do for these kids? How does it change their lives? Tell me a couple maybe situations or, and then also tell the people about your background because a lot of people know you from life. <laughs> they true. know you from here too, but they're but they probably like, life what? Music. What's the disconnect right. here? Tell them about your background because it's quite extensive and impressive. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I played all of my life from the time I was young. I was an accompanist. I was a church musician. And when it came time for college, I knew I didn't want to be a piano performance major. I don't have that driving force that makes me want to be the center of attention, although most people that know me would question that. <laughs> um, but I, I don't feel the need to, to be in the spotlight. Right. But I also knew I didn't want to be a band or a choir director. Nobody wants to hear me sing. <laughs> um, and so there wasn't really a music program that was going to give me what I wanted, which was teaching and accompanying, because right. I did that. I was a church pianist for 40 years. Oh, wow. And so I love doing accompanying. What so, church now? Um, it was, at that point, it was the Felicity United Methodist Church, because I grew up in Felicity, okay. a tiny, tiny town. Yeah. And then Loveland United Methodist Church later on as yeah. an adult. Okay. But I've played um, all over the tri-state as right. you know, a guest artist or a guest accompanist right. or whatever. So I've played everywhere. Um, but I knew I loved teaching, and that's what I really, really wanted to do. But there wasn't a teaching degree available for private instruction right. at that time right. at UC. And so I majored in journalism. And I spent four years. Power. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I spent four years, and it really comes in handy. It I does. write press releases, and I write, you know, all sorts of things. I do biographies for the students. Yeah. Then I got involved with the Life Pantry because it's a really important organization that feeds a lot of people in the area. Yes. And I volunteered there for a couple of years, and then became six years ago the executive director. Yes, you are. There. Let's go, girlfriend. So you see me all the time. Yes. Whether you want to or not, I am everywhere. Yeah, exactly. In but that degree in journalism has come in very handy there right. too, because right. I do a lot of writing and right. managing from those kind of things. Right. Um, I never intended to be a piano teacher for the rest of my life. 
um, I intended to, you know, be the next Woodward and Bernstein because, of course, at the time I was in college, that was a huge influence on yes. me. Yes, yes. But I was teaching in high school a little bit, and while I was in college, it was great spending money, and I didn't have to work at McDonald's. Amen and to that. Yeah. And so, you know, it was, it was a great part-time job. A friend of mine um, was working for Wurlitzer and said, why don't you come teach until you find a job? Yeah. And I just fell in love with the full-time experience because every half an hour is starting the day over again. Every kid or every adult is a totally right. different student and so it's bringing something different to each one of them. That's the real importance for the music education for kids. Yes, it helps their math scores. Yes, it helps their reading scores. And so music education supports their education within the school. But it also supports self-esteem and confidence yes and being able to do something that is for them right musicians have a rough time obviously some more than others the marching band has a whole group pianists don't right you know unless we're playing for a choir or something like that so being a pianist is kind of a segregated thing and, right. and you have to have a teacher that understands what you like, what you enjoy. Yeah, they all have to learn the basics, but if you don't like classical music, making you study nothing but classical music is going to do nothing except make you say, I don't want to play the piano. Right. Right, you know, exactly. So the kids come in and they say, oh, I want to hear whatever it happened to be on the radio that given day. Yep. Okay, let's find the music and let's do that. Exactly. And so it gives them the individuality that all children need right. to be successful in life. Right. And, and, and the thing for me, because, you know, I kind of grew up in Hamilton where you see poverty and people not necessarily get the experiences that they need. This gives these kids something to do, something to oh, strive absolutely. for, something healthy, mentally, physically. And let's be real, sometimes, like you said, those creative kids get segregated because they're different. They are. They're creative. Yep, creative people right. get I Shoot, I went through it being a weird journalist person yeah. writing about weird things. You know we, what I mean? We certainly know that. Exactly. Well, there you go. <laughs> but exactly. So this is very important to me. So, which brings me into. You moved, we right? Did. You didn't expect it. No, we didn't. Your lease wasn't renewed. Um, no. I want to talk about that because I remember when this happened because I was at the coffee shop and I talked to you about it and I almost was in tears because I was thinking about these 400 or 500 kids that you gave them purpose that now that's kind of up in arms, right? So tell me a little bit about the move, how you felt and then talk about the new location, where you are now, but I really just want to get into how you were feeling. How'd you overcome that? Tell me all about it. It, it was a little devastating at first. We had been there for 12 years and had made a lot of improvements in the space. We replaced um, ceilings with nicer looking ceilings. We did acoustical tiles. We did soundproofing. We replaced flooring. We made nice bathrooms. You know, we, we tried to make the space, like this space, mm -hmm. a very welcoming, homey space and never intended to leave there. And so we knew that our lease would be coming up within the year. And so we said to our landlords, you know, we're thinking about some um, improvements that we want to make, some new lighting, some different things that we wanted to do. So we wanted to work out, you know, the extension on our lease and sign, you know, for the next however long we could, at which point what we got back was, no, we're not renewing your lease. Now, in saying that, do you have any idea why? Do you know if something else is going there? I'm just, the disconnect is very confusing just because to, to, not renew a lease for somebody that's making that big of a difference in Loveland, which is what we're about, right? Or the city of we love, so. sweetheart of Ohio. So do you have any ideas or are you just kind of like, well, let's move on to the next thing? What we were told was that the building was going to be repurposed. Okay. Um, and that our space would be repurposed into retail and or restaurants and that the whole building should become retail and or restaurants. Um, when we first moved to that building back in 2009, we had wanted the space downstairs because there were two open spaces and they wouldn't rent it to us at that time because they said they only wanted retail in there. Um, so we moved upstairs. Upstairs is tough if you are not a go-to destination. Right. 
you know, people have to know where you are. And on the second floor of a building, um, nobody knows you're there unless you put out advertising or you have a business that is a destination business. Nobody drives by and goes, oh, look, there's a music academy. I think I'll stop and have a piano lesson. You have right. to want to go right. there. It's not like a shop where you go, oh, that's cute. Let's stop in and do right. a little shopping. This is right. totally different. So right. we're a destination. Um, and we worked very hard to make sure that we were community supporting right. and that we put ourselves out there in the community to help out with events. We provided music for all sorts of events oh, yeah, over the years. Yes. Um, you know, arts in the park and all sorts of things that we did. Um, Granny's Gardens, we did an afternoon concert there once while they had one right. of their events. So we were trying to be out in the community. Um, we supported a lot of the businesses. The kids would come up for lessons, the moms and dads would go shop, they would go to the grocery, they right. would go to the little shops downstairs. Many of our families either planned lunch or dinner around, oh, we have lessons that day, so we'll go to one of the restaurants. Um, when the kids had a great lesson, they'd go down to Grater's for ice cream, yep. or, oh, mom, can we go to the sweet shop? Right. Uh, plaid rooms. It was great for them because all of our teenagers have gotten into vinyl again, yeah. and so they were very excited. Oh, we right. got to play plaid room records. Right. Um, the coffee shops, that was great. Mom can wander across the street, get a cup of coffee, yep. go take a walk on the bike trail, yep. you know, all of those kind of things, trail side, you know, so all those businesses were supported by the between four and five hundred students that we have weekly. Parking became a problem. Parking right. meters were put in and all of a sudden they couldn't find places to park. Traffic was an issue. Um, a number of years ago, Jackson Street Market was right there at the side of the building right. and we lost virtually all of our Tuesday students. Oh. Um, it was devastating for our business on Tuesdays right. because there was no place for people to park and right. they couldn't get there and the traffic was bad. S students just refused to have lessons on that day. Yeah. So for those months it was really a challenge. We survived it. We, yeah. you know, we made it work. So we were really looking forward to some upgrades in the building and some more things that we were right. going to be doing. So all of a sudden it's like, wow, we're not going to be renewed. What do we do now? Neither Aaron or I seriously ever considered closing. It's like, well, now we find a new space. Yep. Literally every retail space in Loveland we looked at. Jeez. Some places, of course, say, hmm, um, I don't think a music studio is a good idea, which we understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quiet. Yeah. You know, we're, yeah. we're not well, the tenants yeah. that you necessarily want. Right. Some of the spaces were too small. Some of the spaces didn't have the soundproofing we needed. Right. They didn't have parking. So we were unique. We're not like a store that you go in, you put out your sign and say, oh, come shop with us. No. It was a very special. So right. it took us seven months to find a space. I was and when was that, that you found this place? We found this space um, in June. June, okay. And so fortunately they put a rush on getting it ready for us because yep. it was mostly an open big box space right. with a few walls built in that had been offices before. Wow. And so we came in and we did walkthroughs and we plotted out where the studios would go and the construction crew came in and did it and they got us in here in early September. And this is considered, what this road is? This road, when you turn it, should be cleaners on that end. Okay. This road is Riverside. Correct. If you come in on the other end of the road by CVS, it's East Kemper. Okay. Okay. We are no longer in the city of Loveland. Okay. We That's what I was thinking. Sims Township. Okay. Okay. And then yeah. the address is one one zero zero eight four. Awesome. East awesome. Kemper. Okay. And that way the people know. Right. And we're Suite A. Okay. Um, but it was sad for both of us to leave Loveland because it's a very vibrant community. We loved being there. We you were in the, the heart of it. Too. We were right in the yep. heart of it, yep. and that was very important to us because it wasn't so much the visibility because we operate primarily word of mouth. Right. We, we do very little advertising. People right. know about us because, you know, oh, where does your kid take lessons? Oh, yeah, I've heard of them. Here, right. let me tell you. Right. Um, but we knew that we were supporting the businesses in Loveland. This is our hometown. Yes. That was important to us, that we were supporting our community right. with our efforts. Right, right. And, and here's the thing, you know, all of that, awful in my opinion, the way it went down, everything, you're not Loveland anymore, but in a roundabout way, it's a blessing because look at what you have now. Oh, it's Look amazing. at this spot. I mean, you're going to be so lucrative and 
How many pianos? Se seven? Uh, well, six we, or we, seven we grands? We have seven grands. One of them is a nine-foot concert grand. That's in my studio. Yes. And then in the other rooms, we have five other upright pianos. Right. Studio instruments. Um, right. We only have one room that doesn't have a piano because it's strictly guitar and percussion, but all the other rooms do have pianos. That was quite a move, as you can oh. imagine, from the second floor um, and quite an expense to have to move all the equipment yep. and it took a lot of time and energy and then you have to put it all back together. Right. And so that that was a little bit of a holy cow, we weren't prepared for yeah. that. Yeah. You know, coming out of COVID, oh, we, were, yeah. we were fortunate. We managed to keep our business going through COVID. Wow. Um, when we couldn't teach in studios any longer, the teachers went to online and right. we retained at least 90% of our students, which was remarkable wow. to do that under those circumstances. Um, we did not receive any benefit from the landlords about, okay, we'll give you a rent reduction or something because you can't use the space. Right. A lot of businesses were getting that, right. but we were told, well, you'll have to look and see if you can get a, a federal loan or something, yeah. you get a grant. Yeah. And we did. We yep. applied for a grant and got that. There you go. Um, for the first six months, we didn't charge our teachers any studio fees. Wow. They taught for free, and Aaron and I just covered the expenses because it was through no fault of the teachers. They were doing the best they could yep. and you yep. know, they still had to earn a living. So we just sucked up the expenses. And mm -hmm. then when we went back, they only paid partial for several months until they worked back to get their schedules back up to running again. Right. And so it was important that this not leave the community, right. that we were able to right. continue what we were doing for the kids and for the schools because our kids learning the things they do make an impact on the music programs at school. Yes, amen to that. And, and like I said, I, I still can't believe that you guys are gone from that space. It just feels like you it's should... It's painful. It is. But like I said, on the bright side, this is going to be awesome. I mean, I took a, lo a look around, walked through everything. Guys, this spot is unreal. It's a beautiful space. So let's get into how can we get more kids involved? Oh, Tell please. the people, adults. Oh, people yeah. that are bored and that want to learn a new absolutely anything tell them about how they can get involved maybe like your website kind of mm -hmm. fill uh loveland in on how they can get involved sure. with level music academy um our website is www.lovelandmusicacademy.com couldn't be any easier than that our phone number is 239-7105 okay. that's 513 of course okay um you can email us at lovelandmusicacademy at gmail Dot com. They all come to me, um, and so I'm the one that sends out the requests. We teach everything, any style of music that you're interested in, any age group that you're interested in. I personally specialize in adults and teenagers, although I do teach younger right. students. Right. But we have some teachers that specialize in the little people, Right. and we have some that specialize in, oh, I do a lot more folk and country, oh, I do a lot more rock and roll, and so we have a teacher for virtually any interest and any instrument that you have, and you can do 30-minute lessons, you can do 45, you can do an hour. We don't do too many group lessons because okay. kids don't learn at the same rate, Right. but sometimes we will have families that, like mom and the son, want to start together, Okay. and so they will start together and then eventually move into the individual okay. instructions themselves. Um, Plenty of parking. Yes. Plenty of free. I saw that. Plenty of free parking, yes. which is wonderful. Right. Um, the traffic isn't bad. I mean, it gets busy yeah. at, at rush yeah. hour, but it's a good location. Um, the signage isn't real good right now, but they're redoing the outside, so soon yeah, we will yeah. have a big level of music academy okay. sign out there. Beautiful. And um, they were gracious enough to let us use the building lobby as our lobby, and it's being rehabbed right now, oh, so it's not yes. as pretty. But because we lost our lobby space, yeah from before, we right. have just a tiny bit of space for parents to right. sit. We now have a lobby out there that parents can sit, a big front lawn that the kids can go out in nice weather and romp and play. I'm yeah. expecting to see snowmen this winter. Yes. I'm thinking the kids are going to love she that. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. Um, but parents can also drop the kids here and feel safe about leaving them right. and running down to CVS or going to the bank right. or going to Starbucks and you know running those um, errands. I hate missing Mile 42 I know, and hometown I know. and all of the businesses that we would send parents to I before. Know. But it's too far for the parking and the traffic yep. for them to go find a place, pay to park, 
do something and get back in half an hour. Right. It's right. just not feasible. You're right. And so I, I feel as though I need to apologize to the parents that I couldn't find a space down there that would allow them those same yeah. benefits that we had before. But you gave an effort, so that's all you can do. We did the best that we could do, and we have other things to offer here. Right. And universally, we're hearing from both our teachers and the parents that are coming in, oh, we love this space, oh, the soundproofing is great. Yes. What a nice environment. It's so clean, it's cheerful. Everybody's happy here. And so in the end, it all worked out yeah, really beautifully. Exactly. It was just a little bit of a nightmare for a few months and a little bit nerve wracking. Yeah, because you don't know what's going to happen. Didn't know what was going to happen and how I was going to do it. And let's face it, I'm 65. I am never moving again. No, not not all this stuff. This is Jeez. it. I am done. Yes. Now, I do have one question. Do you have certain hours that, they're, that parents and children are oh. allowed to book or... You know, it, it depends on the parent and the teacher, and okay. we allow our teachers to set up their own schedules. Okay. And so I teach a couple of mornings a week. We have several other teachers that do morning or early afternoon. Then we also have evening lessons. lessons. So it just depends on what the teacher and the student want to work out. But we try to be very flexible about that. We do have some teachers that teach weekends. Okay. Um, so that's available. And we know that kids have crazy schedules. And so the teachers have the luxury of saying, you want a lesson at nine when you finish with your soccer practice? Oh, well, you're a senior in high school, that's fine. We'll have a lesson at nine. Right. Or, oh, your little one needs a nap at two o'clock. Okay, let's get our lesson finished by one, and then you can get them home. Right, right. And See, so that, we have that's a lot beautiful. of flexibility. Very flexible. So, Linda, let's, let's go into the end of this beautiful interview because this, all this information was needed, and I'm glad that everybody at Loveland Magazine was able to listen. Um, Tell me, where do you see Loveland Music Academy in five years? And then speak to the people and tell them why should they support Loveland Music Academy? In five years, I'll be 70, and I see somebody else taking over a lot of my <laughs> students. Um, although, I, I will pick and choose. I, I can't see myself ever retiring. I don't think piano teachers do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we hope that eventually we'll be able to expand again into more studios. We took the space available for right now, um, but we're hoping to expand more. Right. Um, but we want to stay within this community because we want to support Loveland schools. That's very important. Yes. That being said, we have kids coming from Mason and from Kings oh, wow. and from Indian Hill, and I have one student from Kentucky. Um, and so we do have, other than Loveland kids, we have kids coming from Milford, from all over the place. Yes. Um, but we want to stay within this Loveland community because that's very, very important to us. Um, you know, I don't know where I'll end up, but I can't imagine my life without teaching. Oh, yeah. That's just part of who I am. Um, it's very important for children, and I just want to be able to fulfill that. For the people that want to make music, yes, it's important that you have somebody that supports that dream. Yes. And, and, and so I would say for anybody that's interested in lessons, Give us a call, shoot us an email, come out, set up a trial lesson, or say, I really want to play the guitar, I'm available on Tuesdays, I'll find you a teacher, we'll get you set up, but give it a shot. You don't have to sign a year contract, it's month by month, and so if you find out it's not for you, it's okay, but don't let a dream that you've had not be fulfilled because you're afraid to try. There you because go. we have the best instructors that will make it a pleasure for you to try it. Dang. Well, that right there made me want to join. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, you guys heard it here. Loveland Music Academy. Yes, they move, but they're booming better than ever. Yes. Great instructors, beautiful students, adults. Beautiful studios. Every, beautiful studios, pianos, everything that you can imagine. So please check them out. Um, Linda did tell you all the information there, and I will include it in the article as well. Thank you so much, Linda, for oh, being you. so candid, being so kind, and really taking care of the Loveland community. We really appreciate that. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to get our name out there because there are some people that don't know about us yep. or the Life Food Pantry, and so now they do. Absolutely, and we will keep keep you all informed about that kind of stuff too. Yes. All right, Loveland, well, thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye.